Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil, and this is Science Max Experiments at Large. Today, we're going to be looking at earthquakes. Earthquakes. Huh. Today, we're going to be looking at how to build something. <laughs> that was supposed to happen earlier. Today, we're going to be looking at how to build something that stands up to the shaking of an earthquake. Mm. Earthquakes happen when two plates on the Earth's surface rub together, and it causes the ground to shake. It causes the ground to shake. Sometimes it shakes a little, sometimes it shakes a lot. Chances are you do not live in a place that has earthquakes. But if you do, ask an adult what to do during an earthquake so you can be safe. Modern buildings that are built in earthquake zones are designed to withstand the shaking. But how do scientists and engineers build a building that stands up to the shaking of an earthquake? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at today. First thing we have to do is simulate an earthquake. We're going to build a shaker table. And here's what you need. Two books and... Two books, four elastic bands, and four, four rubber balls. Oh, wait. Uh, okay. Four, four rubber balls. All right. So the first thing you do is actually take your four elastic bands and wrap them around your books. Put one set on one side, one set on the other side, until you have that. Then you take your four balls and you stick them in between the books in the middle-ish area. But you don't want to have them too close to the edges. And now two at the back. And ta-da! You've made your own shaker table. What are you shaking, you ask? I will show you. You build a tower. Like this one here that I built out of building blocks. So here's what you do. You'll need your base to be securely attached to the shaker table. I use painter's tape because it'll come off again without harming the books. And what I want to find out is just how much shaking this tower can take before it falls apart. Ready? Oh. And there it goes. And when you've done that, what you do is you be a science maximite and you design another tower. And you tape it down to your shaker table and see if you can make this tower fall down in an earthquake. And if you built it really well, it probably won't. Aha. But you don't have to just use building blocks. There's all kinds of other materials you can use. Check out this building, which is really tall. And you'll see there's a cup at the top. And that's for a baseball. Put it up at the top, and that means there's a weight up there. And then we shake it, and we see what happens. Oh, oh no! Oh, there it goes. Having a big weight on the top of our tower means we need something that will resist the movement of that weight. So now we're going to start with a triangle. Unlike a rectangle, triangles are very stable. A wider base keeps the structure from swaying too much. And cross braces in the middle mean that there are other triangles within our triangle. All the better to resist movement. Thank you. After Anne and I built our tower, we added the weight to the top, secured it to the base, and tried it out. OK, here we go. Ooh. It's looking good. No problem. It's not twisting. It's not, not even leaning. Not even creaking. No, it looks really good. Wow, this one is really solid. As you can see, this tower is way more solid than our square tower or the flexible tower. OK, look at that. Like, if that's not an earthquake, I don't know what is. Look at that. Look at the way the ground is moving. I don't know if we can shake it much more than this. Faster. Our triangular tower is up past a level of shaking that made the other towers collapse. Now it's time to max out the shaking. There's only one level of shaking that we can do above this. What's that? We shake from either side. We give it all we have. The floor was bouncing from side to side, the tower was tilting, and was totally solid. It's still holding strong. In fact, Anne and I wore out before the building showed any signs of falling over. I think we've done it. Nice yeah. job. Nice. Yeah. Science.
science, Max. Experiments at large, earthquake-proof building. I mean, come on. That was impressive. I like it. Friends coming over, and I don't have a table. But that's OK. I will make a table using my friends. This is an awesome experiment you can do with four friends. Come on in, science friends. I've got Sam and Dylan and Polly here to help me. So everybody turn to your left and sit sideways on the chair and then scooch the chairs into the middle. And then everybody leans back onto the knees of the other person. And then this is why I said you need four friends because you need the fifth person to remove the chairs. Oh. The reason why this works is because everybody's weight is being supported on the legs of the person next to them. Okay, we're gonna rotate in a circle, everybody. Okay, ready? Here we go, rotating, rotating. Oh, oh, science table. Ooh, hey, we're pretty good at this. Okay, uh-oh. Oh, no, oh, no! Oh. <laughs> so there you go. Awesome way to make a table using your friends. Well done, well done, science. Another thing that happens during an earthquake is soil liquefaction. Liquefaction means something turns to liquid. In this case, the very ground you might be standing on. Here's how you can experiment with soil liquefaction. All you need is a plastic container and some water, not very much. Barely enough to cover the bottom of the container because what you're gonna put in next is sand. And you wanna put it in there and spread it around. Just add enough sand so it just starts to turn dry on the very last layer. So here is a house that I'm going to put on top. And now I will simulate an earthquake. The water rises up and it sort of turns to liquid, soil liquefaction. And heavy things like houses and cars, they tend to sink like that. And then the soil rehardens and everybody's houses are stuck in the mud. Being a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Oh, hello. Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker. My tuna fish and meatball sub soup is coming along quite nicely. But what will we have for dessert? I know. How about earthquake buildings? Ha <laughs> ha! It's a building made out of wafer cookies. But the people on Vanilla Street built in the gelatin neighborhood. And the people on Chocolate Street built in the crispy rice part of town. Exciting. Now, here comes the earthquake. Oh, no! Oh, it's shaking! Oh! The shaking has come and gone for the people on Chocolate Avenue, and their building is still standing. Now, let's take a look over here on Vanilla Street, and here comes an earthquake. Oh, no! Oh, dear! Looks like the people on Vanilla Street are going to have to rebuild their building because it's all fallen over and being eaten. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Buildings can be built the same way, but the kind of soil they sit on make a large difference if there's an earthquake. Shaky, wiggly soil or solid, non-moving soil. So there you go, an experiment you can try at home. Delicious. Well, I'm Buster Beaker, and thank you for joining me on this episode of Cooking with Science. Mm, now to try my soup. Seismometer in 60 seconds. Learning how to predict and measure earthquakes is an important branch of science. The Earth is shaking, but which way did the earthquake come from? It's all about measuring the vibrations. And to do that, you need a seismometer. All you need is a ball, some paper cups, some modeling clay, a pencil, and science tape, which is the same thing as invisible tape, except I use this tape for science. First, take your pencil and stick it straight down into the modeling clay. Then, you take your cups and you arrange them in a circle and take the cups down. And that goes right in the middle, just like that. Now, what you do is you take the ball and you carefully balance it on the pencil. Now you have created a seismometer. It will tell you what direction an earthquake came from. Watch, I will be the earthquake. Ready? Did you see that? The ball fell into the cup facing the direction 
that I hit the table. And now I'm gonna hit the table from over here. Yep, it fell in the direction that I hit the table. Okay, let's try from over here. There you go, your very own seismometer that you can use to measure earthquakes that you create on the table.